If you've ever wanted to live stream a slideshow presentation or even record a slideshow using OBS, well, stick around, I'll show you my favorite method. And you know, I was thinking since I'm talking about how to record a slideshow, I might as well show you in slideshow form. So let's actually go ahead and jump over to my slide deck here. And the nice thing about this method is that it's all right here within OBS. And the way that I like to uh, make my slides is this kind of split screen format. And the reason for that is because now I can overlay my video on half of the screen. So I'm using OBS's built-in image slideshow feature in this case. I'll also show you another method in a few minutes if you have some other specific requirements like you need to use transitions built into your slideshow software. But let's go over this process first and I'll show you how it works. So first of all, you just need to make your slideshow. You can use any presentation software, whether that's PowerPoint, Keynote, or Google Slides, or you could even use Canva or anything else. Uh, and you need to make your slides however you want your presentation to look. I found that PowerPoint is the easiest, at least it's the easiest to be able to save all of the slides as individual images, which is the next thing that we need to do. So in PowerPoint, all you need to do is go to export and then you can kind of change this uh, file type here to JPEG. You could use PNG. You can also get to this dialog with the save as and changing the file type to JPEG. Once you do that, it's going to export all of the images into a folder. Uh, one thing that I've noticed so far is if you have more than 10 images, uh, the sequencing isn't going to be quite right. There may be a setting that I haven't found yet. If there is, I'll update my blog post about this uh, with that trick, but it just does slide one, slide two, slide three, and then once you get to slide 10, it's slide one zero, which then gets ordered after slide one when you import them into OBS. So you will need to make sure that inside of this folder, there's a sequential naming system that uh, doesn't let these get out of order alphabetically. All right, so once you've got your your images from the slideshow, so each slide's uh, exported as an image and named sequentially, uh, you're ready to move on to the next step. So inside of OBS, now you can see here, I'm using Streamlabs OBS, uh, OBS Studio, or any version of OBS that you're using should have very similar process. Uh, you're going to add a new scene. So we're just going to create a scene. I'd call this slide presentation. You can name it whatever you want and click done. And then after that, we're going to add a source to the scene. So in this case, we're going to add the image slideshow source. You can see here, just select image slideshow and click add source. Now, in between that step and the one that you're seeing right now on this slide, uh, if you already had an image slideshow from before, you can select that one or you can click the little toggle that says uh, add as a new source instead. All right, so go ahead and add that new source. And then these are the settings that I use. If you wanna pause and copy my settings exactly, uh, you could do that. But then you can see where that arrow's pointing here. We're going to click the plus and we're gonna add a directory. So basically adding the entire folder. So you're gonna to navigate to that folder on your computer and that will add all of the slides within that folder as a source here in OBS. Now after that, the nice thing is we can set hotkeys to advance to the next slide. So just go into your settings, go to hotkeys, and then you'll need to scroll all the way down until you see image slideshow under the sources category here. And then just click on any of those uh, spots where you want to add a hotkey. You can see in my case, I've added arrow right and arrow left for advancing slides. Now, one thing I will tell you is that if you are uh, presenting in OBS and you're using the arrows and you have an item selected, it will advance the slides and also move that item over. <laughs> so you have to be careful. You might want to pick some different keys than I did with arrow right and arrow left, but whichever keys you pick there will advance your slides uh, forward and backwards. After that, you just need to add any additional sources that you might need for your presentation. So in this case, you can see I added my microphone and the camera that is showing me right here on top of uh, the image slideshow so that uh, this would be layered on top of that just like you see in this video. And that's really it. That's, that's how you would present slides. You've seen that I was just presenting those slides live while recording. 
Uh, it works very well. It's fast. Uh, the transitions are very limited. I like to use the cut transition because it's just literally moves on to the next slide without any transition. But there are cases whenever maybe you really do need to use a presentation software, something like PowerPoint or Google Slides. And I have done this in the past. Uh, I'm just finding that doing it with this image export method is easier while you're presenting live. But if you need to go ahead and do a presentation with PowerPoint, I'm going to show you how to do it. And in fact, what we're going to do is we are going to just go ahead and switch over to a screen share. Aha, pretty nice, huh? So you're looking at PowerPoint right now, and this is the presentation that I just went through, uh, but I was doing it inside of OBS. But this is where I set it up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and present this uh, uh, this presentation we can just go over here to slideshow and we'll start from the current slide and that's going to take over the screen uh, and so that, that looks nice and full screen I've still got my video on top of this now with OBS I could turn my video off if I want to just show you the full slides or turn it back on either way works you could even build your slide so the video kind of has a space so you'll know you're never going to cover up any of the information on the slide there's a lot of different options for how you could do this all right and at this point as long as my other window is active, I can present it. Now, of course, I've skipped a couple of steps here, and I'm gonna go back and talk you through a little bit more about how to do this and a couple other tips just in case you don't have a second monitor. That's the real caveat here. In my opinion, this method really only works well if you have a second monitor. Now, there are ways that you can make it work with a single monitor, and you might find that it works just fine for you, but I found when I was testing that when I use the same screen and use the window source, or the window capture source, that I wasn't able to get the slides to advance correctly while presenting, and it was just a little bit buggy. Uh, maybe it's a little bit different with a different version of OBS, or maybe you're on a Mac instead of a PC, and it works fine for you. I'll give you a couple tips about that in a second, but let me go back up just a second. I'm actually going to go to this next slide just to bring up this image. The main difference in this process is that instead of adding the image slideshow, source, you're going to add a display capture source. And in this case, it's really simple. I'm just adding that second monitor as my display capture. And you may need to move your taskbar over or clean up that monitor or do whatever you want so that it can go nice and full screen like you see here. Uh, but that works well. And you can actually see here, I'll just flip through the slides. And so you can see I'm going through my slides easily right there within PowerPoint. And if I had any kind of fancy transitions or anything else, all of that would work live just as if you're watching it right there on that second monitor. So there are some pros to doing it this way. Uh, I just find that, like I said, it's easier if I export the images and bring them right into OBS. All right, let me give you one more tip here on uh, using PowerPoint, I'm actually going to stop the presentation and show you if you do need to use the window capture, there's a way to add a window capture as a source and select the window that you want. You can actually come in here into setup slideshow and change this to browsed by an individual in a window and click OK. Or you can actually, I think you want to set this advanced slides to manually. Uh, click OK, and then whenever you go to present, it will be inside of a window, and you can add that window source in OBS, and uh, you should be able to select that window, and then it will bring it. Now, I also found that sometimes it'll have some extra things on the screen, some presenter tools, and you kind of have to stretch it out to get it just right, but it can work, and I've seen a lot of people using that method. Okay, well, that's really all there is to it. If you're looking to uh, present, I'm actually gonna go back to full screen camera. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a couple of tips here because there are some other things that I've learned uh, along the way. First of all, if you're using Streamlabs, I highly recommend the uh, Stream Deck that they have that I have it on my iPad right here underneath my monitor, and I can easily switch back and forth between these scenes right here with the Stream Deck. Uh, I don't have the Elgato Stream Deck. I'm just using my iPad with the uh, with the software that Streamlabs released to go with Streamlabs OBS. If you're using OBS Studio, there are some apps that do the same thing and they're even more customizable. The idea is it's really nice to have some sort of Stream Deck or Stream Deck app 
uh, to switch back and forth between these scenes. Another random tip for you is I found that whenever I was exporting my slides from PowerPoint, they defaulted to uh, 1920 by 1080 essentially, and I wanted to use 4K. So I'm recording this in 4K in case I need to zoom in or out whenever I'm editing. And to do that, I had to actually go into the registry and change an option. Okay, here's what you really need to know. I have a whole blog post about this. Just head over to coreypotter.com, go to the blog. You'll find the post about presenting a slideshow with OBS, and it has all of this step-by-step -step with the screenshots and my tips and links to the articles about how to do the various different things that I needed to do. Plus, I'll keep that up to date with any other tricks that I find, answers to questions that I get in the comments. Speaking of which, if you have any questions about this, or if it didn't work for you, or if you have an even better way to do this, please leave it in the comments below. That's one of the beauties of YouTube is that we can help each other. Uh, I'm making this just sharing my experience with how I'm presenting this, and it's working well for me, but it may not work for everyone in every situation, and there's lots of tricks and workarounds and things you can do within OBS or with Streamlabs OBS. So I would love to hear your tips on presenting slideshows uh, leave it in the comments below. If you like this kind of thing, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Uh, I'm going to be releasing more things as I learn over time. Uh, I talk a lot about uh, passive income and growing on YouTube. So if you're interested in any of that, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.